Okay, <clears throat> moving on guys. We're going to go ahead and go into importing today and I'm going to give a brief uh, summarization of this. I have actually made this video several times and I went over, I just barely went over the 15 minute mark on my last video, on the last version of this video. So <laughs> hopefully we can get this, uh, get this going a little bit faster. So, okay. So to start out here, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Go into Fallout Mod Manager. And once it loads in here, we're going to go to Tools, BSA Browser. We're going to want to open a file from BSA Browser. You want to go down here to your uh, Meshes folder. And now BSAs basically contain all of your Fallout data. Okay, They contain, depending on what they are, for instance, Meshes is going to contain all of your Meshes, your objects, uh, you know, your clutter, your snap kits, all of your models will be in here. Um, textures will have your textures. Voices will have uh, voice, you know, your wave files and things like that. Uh, and sounds will have all your sound files. Um, and this is just kind of the way they did it. So go ahead and open that up. And once it opens, you'll notice that there's a tree system in here. Okay. And this is kind of called a parent child relationship or even a, you know, a tree and branch system where this is the tree and this would be a branch of that tree this would be you know and then this one would be its own tree and then these would be the branches or this would be the parent this would be the child of that parent and then these would be the children all these would be oops, the children of this parent and this will be important for when we get into NIF scope and into um, into blender itself in the future tutorials okay what I would actually do is I would just select everything and then export it into your data folder for later use you can basically you'll find you know I would do this this with meshes and textures in particularly because in particular because that way you can all op quickly find an, a model that you need and reference it um, and pull it out of that folder and just go look for it or you can you know can you do it this way but uh, that might be faster for meshes, but for textures, you definitely want to send them out because you can actually reuse those textures for a lot of different models. I would suggest doing that. I create my own textures, but I find that using other textures from other uh, from other stuff is is quite handy. So, uh, if I, you know, using textures from um, from Fallout itself is quite handy for especially when I'm working on new, I, I build a lot of new meshes for parts of levels. And so I'll actually open up old, you know, the default fallout uh, meshes and then I will make my own uh, to scale with their, with Bethesda or Obsidian's meshes. And then I will use their textures to make sure that everything matches up and looks good when it's released. Okay, so something to note and anyway, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into the search bar right down here. And I'm going to type table round and do a search on table round. What we found is a mesh called table round vault 01.nif. And I'm going to go ahead and hit extract. Now it's going to go ahead and extract out of your data, your Fallout New Vegas data folder. At least it should have this set as default. If not, you will need to browse to these folders and locate them yourself. You go to under my computer to C drive. Um, it may be different for Windows XP. With mine, you can pretty much just click over here on the side. And then I extract things usually to my C drive just for quick reference. So I don't have to do a lot of searching around with Blender looking for the files when I'm importing. Okay. When I'm saving them out or doing other work with them, that's a little bit different story. So we're going to go ahead and save it. And I've already got this because I've done this video once before um, set up. So, you know, we don't really need to, but I'm going to anyway. I'm going to go ahead and replace it. So we go ahead and we can leave Fallout Mod Manager and, you know, BSA Editor. Go ahead and go into um, Computer is on my other screen I have dual monitors even though I'm running in one um, and we go ahead into our C drive and now we're going to want to locate our file so over here you see table round 
vault01.nif and we want to go ahead and open it up in NIFScope. I will give a really, really quick overview of NIFScope, okay? So to start off, this red outline is your collision mesh. I will explain that in the next video and how to create that. This is basically a parent and child system like I explained just a few moments ago. Um, so if you click on this, it'll span out and you've got, um, so kind of to explain it, BS fade node is Bethesda and Obsidian's um, that will be their um, their root node and everything will be based on that you need to make sure to make note of this because it will save you a lot of time uh, when I do the exporting video we will actually I will show you guys how to export it as a BS fade node otherwise you'll have to sit there there and actually convert it which is a pain um, well, it's pretty easy, but it's a pain after a while after doing it a bunch of times. And in here you've got flags. And if you, uh, now when you are in NIFScope, you wanna make sure to go to view and you wanna make sure that block lists and block details are on and they're somewhere within your window. Right here is where my block, my block list is up here and my block details are down here, okay? That's how I have mine set up. So then you have BSX flags and what they do is if you click on them, they do a lot of different things. You can do things with Havoc, Collision, and Animation. It basically tells the model what to do, okay? And then down here under Collision Object, that's where your collision data is, and I will go further into that later, okay? I don't know why there's a BSA, BS Fade node down here. It's probably just the mesh data. I'm not exactly certain. It's just however they set it up. Now the tri strips, you notice if I click on that, you'll actually get the mesh. This is the mesh data. And under, if you open this up, you, the children under this will show you. Um, and this is these are actually called nodes, by the way. And if you click on this node, in, in NIFScope, they're called nodes. And then branches. And if you click on these, and you'll see a bunch of branches. And uh, you can actually click on materials to change the materials. Um, this one has an alpha property. Um, you can go, for some reason, I, actually it's probably because of these holes right here. but. Anyway, in shader, you can change your shader data and under, okay, actually under shader lighting property, if you span that out and go under that, you'll see textures, go down to block details and you'll see textures. Span that out and you can actually see where the textures go. Make sure that when you do this, when you set up your textures, you do not go all the way, give it uh, a complete directory. You don't go clear back to C drive, to the root directory or C drive and then lead all the way to your files because from operating to system to operating system that will change and not everyone runs on the same operating system so if you just set it up for textures and then furniture and then table vault or whatever you know you want to make sure to set it up to go from the textures folder inside the data folder onto whatever you want um, that'll be enough for what you want to accomplish and Fallout will pretty much know how to find that okay just make sure that you don't use a complete reference. You want to use just kind of a, a general reference. Um, there's a better way of phrasing that, but uh, I learned it in Linux and kind of forgot how to what they're called. But anyway, alrighty. So that's enough of of. Um, oh, and your 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 tri strip data is your the mesh itself. Okay, the mesh data itself. So that's enough for now of NIFScope. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into Blender right here and use 2.4 because 2.5 does not support the scripts. I hope it does in the future because it looks like a great program. We're gonna box select things. I would show you guys how to do that, but, um, or you can actually individually select them and delete them. To box select, you just hit B. You can also shift select them so that you can select each one and select them all together or you can box select them with B and delete them. Or you can actually go in and delete them all separately. But you delete by hitting the delete key and then hit enter or okay, and you're fine. Go into file, go to import, and here you'll see a list of importers. I would suggest using, um, now if you're importing from another file, I would probably always use 
wavefront object because it preserves pretty much most of your mesh data as it is. I don't think it triangulates it. It splits all your faces into triangles and it also preserves your uh, your UVs and your texture data. So use this if you're just importing something say from 3ds Max or another uh, program. That's what I would recommend. Um, use Net Immerse Gambrio and if you notice it says NIF and KF and EGM. EGM is for facial animation stuff I believe. KF is for animations themselves. NIF is for your models. So go ahead and select that. When you go in here uh, oh and then you'll get another window and then you have to select now if you notice we're in our C drive you just want to select table round vault 01 well that's what we're going to do today anyway and you get another window and so in this window you see quite a bit of complex stuff it's not too terribly bad um, and what I would do is I would leave all of this stuff ticked on merge skeleton roots send geometries to bind positions and detach geometries to note positions and bones to bind position I would just leave most of the stuff on it's Kind of leave it at default settings, but make sure this stuff's turned on. Um, I just leave it on just in case. Realign bone tail plus roll is used for um, to help realign the model between Fallout and Blender. So the two can kind of cooperate together. I believe that's what it's for anyway. Um, sometimes when you import the models, they'll be in a different position because of the way that uh, Blender has its axes set up. Now, I would import animation and extra nodes because you want to make sure you've got all the data. Um, I leave animate on even though that's for EGM files, I believe, and um, combine shapes into single mesh is a meh, but you probably do want to do it to make it a little bit, things just a little bit easier to work with. Um, and then you've got import skeleton only and parent select, plus parent to selected, import geometry, plus parent to selected armature, and what these are for is if you want, if you have a rig mesh, you will import your, uh, you may want to, for instance, import your model. Um, you may have a skeleton that you've created or a skeleton that you've already imported and then you want to import your model and have that rig to the skeleton and parent it to it. If you do that, then what you need to do is select your skeleton and then import your model. But if you do it the opposite way, which is import geometry plus parent to select an armature, you need to select your geometry and then have <clears throat> and then import your armature and it will automatically uh, connect to your geometry. I would select, I would probably use the first one. Um, it works a little bit better from what I understand and what I've, re I've read. Um, but uh, as far as this stuff goes, uh, I, for, for for static meshes, you don't need to do any of that. Just leave it as defaults. Leave these all unticked because we're just importing all of the data. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and import, and voila, there we have it. We have a table. So if you spin around it, you can see the table. You can see that we have a collision mesh, and I'll go more in on that collision mesh data uh, later on. And Anyway, you can kind of see here's our table and if we grab the table and we move it around, collision mesh will move with it. If we grab the collision mesh and we move it around, you'll see this beautiful little line spanning off to the table. And that's because they are the collision mesh is parented to that table and it must be done that way. And I will explain how to do that and how uh, how to set up parenting later on. So, you want to make sure that that's that this collision mesh is in a sense a child of that table okay and if you go under logic if you select the collision mesh and then you go under logic you'll actually see under logic that we've set up that all the properties for your havoc data and all that stuff is set up in here we don't need all of this because I don't believe because uh, a lot of this is set to zero and some of it relates to oblivion and, and other stuff and other properties so um, Anyway, this concludes my very first tutorial. So hopefully it help you it will help you guys import more models and thanks for watching. Have a great day.